Here is another video where I explore what a horizontal asymptote is, but I switched the rational function. Remember, a rational function is a polynomial over a polynomial. And it turns out with this problem, I made it so that the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is the same as, they're equal, the, the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. So this is linear on the numerator and linear in the denominator. So the degree on the numerator is 1, and the degree, which is the highest exponent in the denominator, is a 1. And they don't have to both be 1s, they could both be 55, it doesn't matter. But as long as the highest exponent in the numerator is the same as the denominator, you would use the following rule for horizontal asymptotes. So before I show you what happens, let me just sort of explore this numerically. If you were to plug in, again, larger and larger x values, you could see what happens to the y values. So getting to the heart of the matter, a horizontal asymptote is basically the question, what happens to y as the x values, the inputs, uh, get very, very large in both the positive direction, so these x values, and very large negative x values, so going this way on the real number line. So I'm going to start numerically by just simply plugging in things like 2, uh, but you quickly want to, maybe perhaps 8, but you quickly want to jump up to, to uh, say, 100 or 1,000 or a million for that case and see what happens. So for small x values like 2, it turns out that adding 4 and subtracting 1 make a huge difference. So when you plug in 2 here, uh, you actually uh, get out 24 over, let me see here, 10 times 2 is 20, plus 4 is 24, 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1 is 9, you get 24 over 9. Uh, which is about 2 and 2 thirds, so it's about 2.66666. I'll you know, round that to 2.7. So there's the point 2 comma roughly 2.7 there. And again, I'm rounding, it really is 2.6 repeating. That's one single point. But again, a horizontal asymptote says what happens to the y values as x gets really, really large. And in this example, you can even see that the y values do get smaller and smaller, but they seem to be leveling off. There seems to be a line here for which the graph doesn't cross. And we want to know what that equation is. What is that horizontal line for which the graph approaches infinitely far to the right? And over here, it seems to be doing that to the left. If you plugged in very, very large negative x values, it seems like the y values level off to this. In fact, if you look at it, it looks like the answer would be 2, and indeed it, it is. Uh, so if you were to bump this up a little bit and plug in 8, you can go to your graphing calculator or whatever you have to do uh, to plug in 8, and you'd see at x equals 8, you get about uh, 2.15. Uh, Let me just round that to about 2.2 for our purposes. So it uh, goes a little lower. You're at uh, 8 comma 2.2. Uh, so I, I did that just because of the graph that I have on the screen here. But if you let me go to a more sophisticated grapher, you'll see what happens when you plug in 100 and say 1,000. If you were to go to your table of values on your calculator, you'd see that plugging in 100 gives you about uh, 2.01. And if you actually were to plug in 1,000, you'd get about 2.001, and you could continue that pattern. In fact, uh, while I'm talking, I might load the graphing calculator uh, just to show you how that's done on your calculator. Uh, but in the meantime, let me show you the, uh, a more sophisticated graph. I get this from the uh, uh, website on the Internet. And here's my equation, y equals 10x plus 4 over 5x minus 1. And as said before, for small x values, you know, the y values, they skyrocket, they do all kinds of crazy things. But if you were to zoom out and only concern yourself with what happens when x is very large, the graph looks horizontal. It looks like it levels off. In fact, it looks like it levels off at about y equals uh, two. So you could do this graphically, or you could use your calculator to uh, to do it numerically. But if you just look at uh, the way the outputs are behaving on this, it looks like um, that they're leveling off to about y equals two. So, by the way, in case you want to follow along on your graph and calculator, if you turn it on, you could go to your y equals, and you could uh, type in left parenthesis. I think it was 10x uh, plus one. And then that whole quantity, so I'll put it in parentheses, is being divided by the entire quantity 5x minus 1. 
And if you wanted to explore this numerically, what you could do is go to your table set by pressing second window and make sure that it is on independent ask. So if it's on auto, let me go down twice and press enter. If your calculator is on auto, go down twice, move over to the right, press enter and put it on ask. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so the calculator asks me for my inputs and it'll automatically give me my outputs now that I've typed the equation into my y equals. So going to the table here, second uh, table, I now could type in those x values in, um, looks like they're already in there for me because I was doing a different video, but suppose you had some x values there you didn't like, you could delete them. And let me see, so far I think I plugged in two, I can down arrow, uh, I think we plugged in eight, and then I think I went to uh, 100 or something. So you can see those values that I were, was plugging in before. And if you just plug in larger, larger x values here, you'll see that for small x values, your number differs widely with the number 2. You get 2.3, 2.07. But the larger the x values get, the closer your outputs become the number 2. In fact, if I get really large, the calculator will probably start rounding it just to 2. But just to show you many times, if you want more accuracy, you can go up and over in the table and it'll show you that it isn't exactly 2, uh, it's 2.006 uh, roughly. So you could play around uh, if you'd like. So back to here, you can see uh, that the graph levels off to y equals 2. So we would say uh, in a math AS question, what is the equation for the horizontal asymptote if there is one? Uh, and there was one, and it was y equals 2. So you would just type in uh, the line. So it's not just a y value, it's the equation for a line. So this is the equation for a horizontal line, and it is y equals 2. And that would be the answer to the question. Uh, but let me say that in general, I would explain the problem this way because it would just take uh, less time. So in, in a minute, I'm going to make a shortcut video where I would explain the problem analytically. So it was great to do it numerically and graphically, but if you want to look at the analytical explanation, what you would do is you would simply say that for large x, this is not true for small x, but for large x, and the larger the x values, the more this holds true, that this ex expression here, the output here, is approximately 10x over 5x, meaning that when you get into x values like a million, you know, 10 times a million is 10 million. The 10 plays an important role. Uh, if you plug in a million, you get 10 million instead. But adding 4 would not change much. Instead of 10 million, you get 10 million and 4. So for large x values, the 4 doesn't play an important role. And for large x values, the minus 1 doesn't, doesn't play an important role. So for example, if I plugged in a million, the 5 would take a million and, and make it 5 million, but subtracting 1 wouldn't change the output very much. So this expression for large x values is roughly 10x over 5x. And then the x's simplify out, which gives you just the 10 over the 5, uh, which is the number 2. So we say that whenever the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, what you do is you look at those leading coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers in front of the x values, and we want the ones that are the coefficients on the x's with the largest exponents. So this is the x value with the largest exponent, and here is its coefficient, 10. Down here, this is the x value with the largest exponent, and its coefficient is 5. So the answer is going to be the horizontal line y equals, and then the number that you'd get over here would be found just by taking that ratio of those two coefficients, 10 over 5 or 2. Now, I have a way of memorizing this. Uh, some of my students enjoy it, but it only works if things are in descending order. So, for example, because my problem was in descending order, meaning that they put the first degree term before the constant, and in the denominator they did that as well. So if it wasn't like that, to use my shortcut rule, uh, you would have to make it so. But I would tell my students to use what's called the thumb rule. And it's kind of a silly rule. I doubt that anybody else in the world calls it the thumb rule. But for me, I call it the thumb rule because if you have a rational function and the polynomials are in descending order like this and the degrees are the same, it doesn't matter if the degrees are both 1 or 100, whatever the degrees are, as long as they're the same, and this is degree 1 and that's degree 1, and they're the same, they're both 1, then what you do is you use the thumb rule, which basically says that your thumb is significant 
you know, sufficiently large enough to cover up all of this stuff and leave just those leading coefficients. And the way I like that is, is that just visually inspecting the problem, you can see that the answer to the question is sitting right there, meaning y equals 10 over 5 was sitting there at the beginning, and that's the answer to the problem, but only when you're asked to find the, the horizontal asymptote of a rational function, and only if it's the case where the degrees are equal. So if you have the patience, I'm going to throw one more thing in here just to show you in a different example that it does not matter how big the degree is, um, as long as they are equal, then the thumb rule would apply. Um, so let me just make up a problem here. I'm just making this up randomly. You know, 2x to the 4th minus 5x squared, whatever. I'm just making things up. But here's another example where you have a rational function and the degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. In this case, they're both 4. So since I have a rational function, the question is to find the horizontal asymptote. The degrees are the same. All that being said, the answer would simply be uh, y equals 3 halves. That if I were to graph this equation carefully, I would see that the graph levels off to 3 halves, or 1.5, as opposed to this example where the graph leveled off at y equals uh, 2. So it doesn't matter what the degree is. As long as they're equal, you look at those leading coefficients, uh, and that would tell you what the equation is for the horizontal asymptote.